I chose one of the quotes that I chose is, is it's easier uh, to fight for one's principles than to live up to them. And the reason uh, I choose that the most is it, it's easy to sit and fight for what you believe in. It, it's hard to, to live up to that. And, and especially in the, in the world of a coach, when you look at coaches, uh, I need to fight for my principles and what I believe in, hard work, dedication, uh, players becoming accountable and getting better each and every day. I have, to, I have to fight for that. I have to fight for what I think is important in the execution of the game, in the execution of life, what's important for school. Uh, it's hard to live up to that. Uh, it's hard for me to execute correctly every single day. It's, it's hard for me to, to be accountable every single day, but it's easier to fight for those principles and, and put those together. And, and everyone within the program sees them and then I have to live them and that's the hardest part is, is living up to those principles and I think that's the job of any coach of any person is you know, fight all you want for whatever the principles are you have in your life but now you have to live them and if you can live them then the people around you become better and they also need to see that you're human so when you fail uh, they need to see how you overcome those failures and get back on it uh, to the principles that matter to you. The second, the second uh, quote that I, true freedom uh, begins and ends with personal accountability. This one hits home for me the most. Uh, I drive the players at, and I talk to people every day and, and in my own accountability part, whenever I'm free is when I'm accountable for what I do and how I do it. And the true accountability comes from, we're always trying to please someone. We're always trying to please the coach. We're always trying to please the teacher. We're always trying to please our significant other. We're always trying to please our parents. We're trying to please my kids. And, and in that, sometimes I find that, that I'm not truly free. There's the accountability part. I can't ever make, I can't make everyone happy all the time. And what I need to really get back to in myself as a person is I need to be able to to be happy with who I am. I need to look at myself and hold myself accountable. And I try to get that along to my players. When my players take care of what they're capable of, when they're accountable for, for going to school, when they're accountable for being good people off the field, when they're accountable for mastering their skills at catching a ground ball, bunting a ball, hit and run, uh, their flushing system, how they speak around people, the role models, when they're accountable for all those things, then they start to help everyone else out. When they go to practice to try to make me happy, you know, I hope coach is happy with me, I hope coach is happy, I, I, I want my mom and dad to be proud of me as a player, and, and when they go 0 for 3, do they go home and ask themselves, well I'm a failure and no one's happy? And I think that's where the, the team chemistry starts to break down. And that's where the person starts to break down is, is in this constant pursuit to make someone else happy. And I think I look at it from a, a coaching standpoint. If, if I go to work every day and I work as hard as I could possibly work and, and I make money and I, and I can take care of my family and, and I have good morals and, and they're proud of who we are as people and everything works pretty good. But if I go to work and all I do is make money and I come home and say, well, the money's going to take care of it. It's kind of like an athlete. If an athlete just takes his ability level and he says, well, my ability is good enough and if I have great ability, everyone else around me is happy. And, and I think there's, that's where the team starts to break down. Teams aren't made and, and lost by making each other happy. They're, they're made by the accountability that we hold ourselves to. And, and when we're happy about who we are and what we give, Everyone else around us probably prospers from that. And I, and I say it like this in the end, the only way you can help others is you have to help yourself first. As soon as you have yourself helped, then you can start to reach out to others. And, and that's how we work the team. We always talk about the team being first, but in, in all reality, the person is first. As soon as the person is taken care of and in line, then you start to help the team and that's where we, we, we try not to break down as a team. We try not to help somebody else 
before we've helped ourselves get better in all aspects. Third, the third quote that I chose is, it, is life is not accountable to us, uh, we're accountable to life. Uh, I think when you, when you really sit down and, and hear the quote, you have to be able to digest the accountability part where uh, we have to understand that, that there's something way bigger out there than, than just us as far as, you know, it's our world and I'm living in it and it's my decisions and that's all great, but the accountability part is is I'm not accountable, I have to be accountable to everything in the end and, and my character is what's going to be most thought of at the end of my time as a coach. And I think you as a player, you as a person, when you look at that accountability part, no one's going to remember you for, for how fast you pitched the ball, how fast you ran to first base, how far you hit a home run to beat Loyola Marymount, how you beat UCLA three to nothing. That they're, they're going to look at you and say, this is a good person that was capable of doing great things. It's just, it was a simple person capable of overcoming adversity and doing great things. And this is why they did great things. Not because they wanted notoriety, not because life owed them anything, not because they were doing it for money. They were just doing it so that they could give back to people and say, look, you can do this and still be a great person. You can do this and still have character. You can have success and still give back. And so when you look at the quote of, of not being just accountable, but being accountable to life, when you look at it, it's, it's interesting to get our athletes, me personally, to get my athletes to understand that there's something way bigger out there than just them. And uh, when they do that, then they start to understand that Strength comes from within the team. Strength comes from the relationships within the team. And strength doesn't come from the batting average, doesn't come from the number of money you have in the bank. It comes from the relationships that you build based on that. So I think that's, that's how that sits home with me. Uh, personal traits uh, for me that I think that have helped me to be successful I think they're simple, they're simple traits. Uh, patience, hard work, perseverance. Uh, I think the greatest trait that I might have is, is the ability to listen and to take what's important for people and try to make that come to the forefront. And I think when I look at my team, I always have that eye set on, on what's important now for them. What do they need in order to be successful? Uh, and not so much just motivation, but just from a standpoint of, of what's important, what can touch them, what can transpose them into being great. And when I look at each player, I don't necessarily look at that player as to what that player has and what that player can give, but what that player can become in the end. And, and I think that's probably my greatest gift is being able to evaluate talent get the most out of that talent and then cultivate that talent um, and I think what gets missed sometimes is is not the cultivation of the talent but not being able to see it and then not being able to bring it out and and I think that's what I feel most gratifying about is, is I'm able to reach into the soul of a human being and pull out whatever's in that soul not just the a athletic ability the academic ability but what's ever inside the soul. And I try to get rid of fear, I try to get rid of whatever's in there that, that keeps the soul from actually coming out. So as that sounds kind of futuristic a little bit, but that uh, I always have some reaches into the soul of players, of people, to try to get whatever I can out of them, and I think that's my gift. Um, I think the single thing that may be the most influential part of what I bring every day are my listening skills. I really listen to kids. I listen to their body language. I listen to their, their life. I listen to where they can go and what they can do. I listen to other people. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I think I give the most of is, is being able to hear uh, 
what needs to be done and, and how to do it is, is a great execution part of it, but more importantly, what needs to be done. Some people always know how to do it, but they can't figure out what actually needs to be done. And if I, if I had one trait that I could get out, it's I can see the things that, that need to be done and then I try to attack them as, as best I can. culture that, that we provide from an accountability standpoint for USF is, is in the acronyms of our, our logo, the DONS, uh, in our mascot. So we've taken every acronym, the D, the O, the N, and the S, and, and we use it every single day to communicate with our players. The D represents player-driven people at, and we try to get our players to be driven. We try to be, get them to be the people that add. Uh, the O is the on it. They're on it task by task. Uh, they separate. They're in the nap. They're they're in the opportunity that they're in, and they try to stay on it. So, when they go into the weight room, they touch the on it. It's above the door. When they come out of the weight room, they're on it again because now they're moving either to academics or they're moving into their normal everyday life. Uh, the end part is the now. We try to stay in the present moment no matter what. We try not to to get caught up in mistakes. We try not to look at the future and talk about how much success we're having or, or difficulties and we try to stay in the now so it's task by task staying in it trying to stay in the here and now and then the S is for simple simple man simple person simple student uh, the S is in center field and it's a, it's a small letter so we've taken all four of those and we've tried to use it for our team uh, every day and, and we communicate like that every day if a player walks into the weight room and he hasn't touched the sign, someone will say, you need to stay on it. Uh, instead of uh, get to work, they go back outside, they touch it. In their mind, the accountability part of their mind, now they're on it in the weight room and everything else is outside of that. When they're leaving the weight room, if they, if they fail to touch the on it sign, someone will bring them back and say, you need to get on it. So now they know they're leaving the weight room and they gotta get on their life, whether it's communicating with family and friends or that's going to homework or whatever that might be they need to get on it putting food into their body getting rest the simple part is is the greatest part for us is we try to stay simple we try to keep our thoughts simple we try to stay simple as a student as a person we use that in center field so whenever a player may struggle throughout the day and we're in uniform in a game situation we'll touch the D and let them know that each player in that dugout has to be driven in order to make us successful. There are the player-driven people that I, uh, if someone's not on it where they don't get a sign or, or they miss something in the game or they're not doing a chart, we'll just touch the O. Uh, if a guy's at the plate and, and he's worried about the ball or strike that an umpire called, we'll touch the end and just say, now is important. What happened before, what's gonna happen after that doesn't matter. And then the simple part is whenever someone gets to a point where they, they, they're, their thinking is too critical on the field or in the classroom or as people, we'll just touch the S and say, stay simple. And it, it's not a perfect world, but it's, it's a world where you can communicate with 18 to 21 year old people every single day and not feel like it's an authoritative, but it's more of an accountability. And, when we teach our players to become accountable for themselves and, and they take care of themselves, then they start to help everybody else in the program. But if they can't take care of themselves, if they can't be driven, if they're not on it, if they're not simple, if they're not in the here and now, it's really difficult for them to branch out and help anyone else.